Hi there, welcome to the 30 Day Toe Touch Flexibility Challenge. My name is Danny, and I'm joined by my lovely and very average flexibility body mate. And we're gonna be showing you about a 20 minute stretching routine to focus on your hamstring flexibility. So when it comes to being able to touch your toes, it's often tight hamstrings that hold a lot of people back. So this routine is gonna show you both active and passive exercises you can use to help strengthen your hip flexors as well as strengthen and stretch your hamstrings. For those that wanna turn this into a true 30 day challenge, at the end of the video, I will talk a little bit more about scheduling and how to do this routine as you go about your week over the course of about a month. And with that said, let's dive into the stretching. First off, we're gonna get started with a warm up. We're gonna start with something really easy, just jogging in place. Does not have to be anything fancy. You can be jogging really hard. You could be really taking it easy, keeping your feet low to the ground. Just gonna be doing this for a couple of moments. If you wanna vary it up, go ahead and do a couple high knees. See if you can lift your knees a little higher. Wake up those hip flexors. And you can keep those knees low. Try to kick yourself in the butt with your heels. And then go back to running normally. Whatever jogging in place comfortably feels like to you. Go ahead, quiet those feet, come to standing. Take your feet about hip width apart. We're just gonna do about a couple body weight squats. So sit in our butt back in an imaginary chair, coming back up. You can be going ass to the grass if you'd like, or you could just be doing a little squat, not even going down to your knees. I'm gonna do another seven, six, five, four, three, two. Last one, back on up to standing. Take your hands in your hips, go through a couple hip circles in one direction. Getting just a real easy stretch through the front of those hips, those hip flexors. And then reverse your circles, take them the other direction. Yeah, then we're gonna do some knee circles. You can do these in the middle of the room or you can come by a wall or a chair, something you got for support. Shifting our weight to our left leg, we're gonna lift our right knee, circle it to the outside. Five, four, three, two, one. Still the right leg, circle it to the inside. Five times. Five, four, three, two, one. Shake it out if it needs a shake out. Switch legs. Right leg is our base, left knee circling to the outside. Five times. Four, three, one, and then to the inside, five times, five, four, three, two, one. Go ahead, shift your weight back to that left foot. We're gonna wake up our hip rotation. We're gonna try to lift our right knee so that right knee is sticking out right in front of our hip. Knee stays bent, and we're gonna rotate our thigh to the outside, swinging our foot across, and then rotate that thigh to the inside. Foot swings the other way. So foot swings towards our midline, and then towards the outside. Your challenge is keeping your knee in the same spot. You can have your hand on the top of your thigh if that gives you a frame of reference for not wiggling your knee around like crazy. Two more on this leg. Last one. Go ahead, shake it out. Switch legs, lifting our left knee. Left knee sticking out right in front of our left hip bone, rotating our toes towards the outside, thigh towards the inside, then the other way. Thigh to the outside, foot towards the inside. Here for another five, four, three, two. Last ones, go ahead, shake it out. Now to warm up our hamstrings, I want you to keep this next drill really easy. We're gonna do good mornings. So we're gonna have our feet hip width apart, slight bend in those knees, keeping your back nice and flat. You're gonna start to lean forwards. I only want you to go until you feel like a four out of 10 or a five out of 10 stretch in those hamstrings. So we can see Nate is nowhere near to chest parallel to the floor because he's got tighter hamstrings. So this is likely gonna be more of what you look like. We're gonna forward fold, find that very comfortable, just the beginning of a stretch. Then we're gonna push both of our feet into the floor. You're gonna feel your hamstrings contract as we lift our torso. We'll do that eight more times for a total of 10. So finding your comfortable flat back hamstring stretch, real gentle stretch, don't go super far. 
here for another seven. Six, knees can bend as much as you need to. Five, push into those feet every time you come back up. Four. Three. Two. Last one, we're gonna keep that forward fold. Now you can do a ragdoll forward fold. Knees are gonna stay bent. We're gonna let our back round. You can relax your arms and dangle them long or grab opposite elbows. You're welcome to forward fold as much as is comfortable. This is the only time today where we're gonna be letting our back round. So go ahead, relax here for a moment. You can take a couple sway side to side or bend one knee than the other. And then keeping your knees a little bit, slowly roll up to standing one vertebrae at a time. Now that we're a little bit more warmed up, let's do a quick check in on how our hamstrings are feeling. We're gonna do this as a bit of a progress test. We'll do this at the very beginning, the very end of class. We're just gonna see how far can we comfortably forward fold with our back nice and flat. So keeping just a little bit of a bend in the knees. We can have hands on hips or on our thighs for support. We're gonna start to forward fold, thinking about tilting our hips forwards, lifting our tailbone away from the floor so that back stays flat as far as you comfortably can, finding that hamstring stretch. Just holding for a moment or two, making a mental note how close towards the ground can you reach your hands, maybe where on your legs they go, can you touch your toes, can you not touch your toes, etc. You're welcome to take a picture. And go ahead, come on up. Let's do some stretching. First exercise we're gonna do is a nerve glide for our sciatic nerve, which is nice to do, especially if you've got a lot of tension in the back of your legs. I have a separate video of how to test if you have sciatic nerve tension. I'll link to that in the description. So for this exercise, we're gonna start lying on our back. We're gonna start working on the right leg. So you're gonna have your right knee bent. Hands are gonna come behind that right thigh, foot relaxed towards our butt. Keeping your ankle relatively pointed as much as is comfortable. You're gonna start kicking that right foot towards the ceiling, stopping right when you feel the very beginning of a stretch, either in your hamstrings, your calves, or if you ever feel any back tension in your hamstring stretches, that's your stopping point. We don't want this to turn into a stretch. We're trying to have this happen in a pre-stretch range of motion. So once you feel just the very beginnings of a stretch, you're gonna flex that top foot, keep that foot flexed as you lower it down, point those toes, Repeat nine more times, kicking that leg up, stopping when you barely start to feel that stretch. Flex, lower it down. So another eight, toes pointed as we lift, foot flexed as we drop. Seven. Six. Keeping this real gentle, still avoiding that stretching feeling, five. So you'll notice Nate's knee stays real bent this whole time. That's perfect, four. Three, last two, toes pointed as we lift, foot flexes as we drop, last one. And you can shake out that right leg for a moment, give it a break. Second exercise for that right leg, we're gonna keep working that leg, this time foot stays flexed the whole time, otherwise the exercise stays the same. So starting with that foot flexed, you'll start kicking that leg straight, stopping when you feel the very beginning of a stretch, so no more than three out of 10 or four out of 10 intensity, lower that heel back towards your butt. Kicking it straight, stop it, drop it down. Another eight, seven, six, five, four, last three, two, and one. And you can shake out that right leg. We're gonna do these same two nerve mobilizations on the left leg. So hands behind your left thigh, starting with toes pointed, starting to kick your left foot up, stopping when you feel the beginning of the stretch. So that four out of 10 intensity, flex the foot as you drop it back down. That's nine, point those toes, kick that leg up, drop it for nine, eight, good, seven. So still just being conscious that we're not feeling any intense stretches, you're stopping before you get to that point, six. Toes lift as your foot lifts, ankle flexes as you drop. Last three, two. Last one on this leg. Shake it out for a moment, give it a break. 
And last exercise for our sciatic nerve on the left leg. We're gonna keep the foot flexed, which just adds a teeny bit more tension, but still trying to stop the movement before you feel that stretch. Lifting that foot, stopping when you get to that hamstring stretch or that intense calf stretch, drop it down. Kicking up for nine. Eight. Seven, and you can see Nate's doing a really good job keeping the bent knee, which is what he needs to avoid feeling that really intense stretch. Nerves are not like muscles. They do not like to be stretched. They respond really well to sliding and gliding back and forth, which is what we're doing with the bending and straightening of the knee, the pointing and flexing of the foot. I'm gonna do two more, that's two. And one. Go ahead, shake that leg out. And we'll move on to some other stretches. For this next exercise, you're going to want to find yourself some wall space lying on your back, but just an inch or two away from the wall with knees bent. This is a variation of legs up the wall. We're going to add a little bit of movement. So starting with your knees bent, you're going to start sliding your feet up the wall, working towards straightening those legs, finding that stretch in your hamstrings and bending those knees, sliding your feet back down far enough that you don't feel that hamstring stretch. So as you're lifting the legs, you're finding your hamstring stretch as you're sliding them down you're losing that hamstring stretch. If this feels relatively comfortable and you can get your legs straight and this only feels like a five out of 10 stretch for you, go ahead, slide your butt all the way against the wall, butt to the wall. We're gonna do this about 10 times total. So we'll do another six. And five, four, three, two, and then on the last one, I want you to keep your feet reaching up, legs as straight as you can comfortably hold this hamstring stretch. We'll be here for about 20 seconds. One of the reasons I really like this exercise is because your back is on the floor and your butt's pressed against the wall, this is helping keeping our back really flat. A common way to cheat hamstring stretches is to round when we're reaching for our toes, which means we're doing more of the work through our back and our hamstrings are staying the same length. So we'll be here for another five, four, three, two, one. Then you can come on out, check out your legs if you need to. After our wall slides, we're gonna follow this up with another passive stretch. For this one, you wanna be lying on the floor and you want some kind of strap. You can have a stretchy strap like what Nate has here. You can use a stiff strap. You can use like a scarf, pair of pants, towel, really anything works. We're gonna start with both knees bent. We're gonna lasso that strap on our right foot. So Nate's gonna kick his right foot up. That knee can stay as bent as you'd like. I would encourage you to keep that knee bent. He's gonna pull it in as much as he can until he starts to feel that hamstring stretch. We're gonna hold here for about 20 to 30 seconds. So I like including passive stretching a little bit early on in my training, even though a lot of what we're doing today is active flexibility. We're engaging and squeezing our muscles. Is ultimately we can only get so much out of active flexibility as we have the range of passive motion. Passive stretching is also a little bit easier, so it's nice and comfortable to do. So we're getting into our training early on. So we'll hold this one for another 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And you can lose that strap, shake out that right leg if it needs it. We're gonna switch legs, lassoing your strap around your left foot, back and head stay relaxed on the ground. Pulling that left foot in as far as is comfortable so that you're feeling that stretch in the back of your left hamstrings. As Nate has, I want you to keep a little bit of a bend in that left knee. It's not only gonna make this stretch a little bit more comfortable for you, if you're someone who has a hard time feeling the stretch in the muscle belly of the hamstring when your leg is straight, often you can feel more of a stretch when that knee is bent. So if sometimes you do this exercise and it feels like your leg doesn't move, Bend that knee a little more. See if that gives you more of that stretching sensation in those hamstrings. I'm gonna hold here for about 10 more seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Shake it out. Now time for something a little bit more active. We're gonna work on strengthening the hip flexors, the muscles in the front of the hip. Nate's gonna keep his left knee bent extend his right leg out. Right leg can still stay a little bit. We're gonna kick that right leg towards your chest, high as you can, lower it back down 10 times, kicking that leg in nine, eight, seven. Keep these slow, don't just whip it as fast as you can. Six, the speed that Nate's going is great. Five, four, and again, that knee bend on point. Last 
three, two, last one. Then you can give that right leg a shake. I know these are a little squeezy. Same thing on the left leg. So left leg's gonna extend out, kicking it towards your chest for 10. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. Last one. And shake it out, relax. So we just did some strengthening for our hip flexors. Now we're gonna do some strengthening for our hamstrings with some contract relax. You may have heard this called PNF. So we're gonna go back to using our strap, lying on your back, left knee can stay bent. You're gonna kick your right leg up with your foot on your strap. And I want you to be pulling that leg in, starting at like a five out of 10 or six out of 10 intensity stretch. So not pulling it in as much as humanly possible. You want you to either bend your knee or let your foot drift a little bit farther away so that you're feeling a very comfortable hamstring stretch. Not as deep as you could go, finding that like 50% intensity. That way we can strengthen our muscles across a whole range of motion. So in this position, your hamstrings are a little bit lengthened, continuing to pull that strap towards your chest. You're gonna kick that right foot away. This is gonna contract those hamstrings. We're gonna hold that contraction for another eight seconds. Seven, six, five, four. Shaking means you're working well. Three, two, one. Relax that leg. Pull it in teeny bit deeper. Still not as far as you can go. I want you to find your eight out of 10 intensity stretch. So from here, your knee can still be bent. And I want you to go by feeling. It might not look very different from that first stretch, but I want you to feel something that in your body is like seven out of 10, eight out of 10 of a stretch. So now our hamstrings are just being pulled a teeny bit longer and we're gonna strengthen them again, kicking that right foot away. Hands are holding the leg in the same spot. So hamstrings are staying the same length while they're contracting. We're gonna be here for another six seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Relax that leg. Now you can pull it in as deep as you can go. So right now this is passive stretch. Your arms are doing the work of pulling that leg in, still feeling that hamstring stretch. It's gotten a little more intense because now your hamstrings are as long as your body's gonna allow. We're gonna do one last round of contracting, kicking that right foot away, feeling those hamstrings contract. 10 seconds, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Last relax round, you're gonna relax that leg. Just keep pulling it in. You might have a little bit of extra range of motion now that you did some of that contracting. We're just gonna hold here for about 10 more seconds. Taking a couple breaths. If your leg is quaking a little bit, that's very normal. That's usually just your muscles being a little weak in this position because they're at their end range. This is not a strong position for any of us. Then go ahead and relax. Come on out, lose the strap. Shake out that leg, give it any little love it needs. Do the same thing on the left leg. So strap goes on that left foot, right knee can be bent, foot on the floor. Starting in your comfortable stretch, no more than a five out of 10 intensity. So that foot might be towards the ceiling, that foot might be reaching off towards the under and the mat. Knee can be generously bent. So once you found your comfortable stretch, hamstrings just a little bit lengthened, because this is your five out of 10 intensity, start kicking that left foot away. Feel those hamstrings contracting while you're holding them at this length by holding that strap in place. Now hold for another six, five, four, three, two, one. Relax that leg for a moment and pull it in teeny bit more, finding your seven out of 10, eight out of 10. So hamstrings being pulled teeny bit longer, Totally fine if this doesn't look different from the other stretch. I want you to go by the sensation, but still not going as hard as you can just yet. We're gonna contract again, kick that left foot away. Hands are holding the leg in place. This is keeping our hamstrings that same length as they're contracting. Hold in for seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Relax that leg for a moment. Now pull it in as far as it goes whether that is a large movement or a micro small movement, now your hamstrings are getting the deepest stretch. You're pulling them as long as your body will allow. And then we're gonna resist the stretch, contract those hamstrings, kick that left leg away, hands still pulling them in. So hamstrings are as long as they'll get and they're contracting to do work, holding for our last five, four, three, two, one. Relax that left leg. If you can, you can pull it in any farther. Otherwise, we're just gonna hold it where it's at, continuing to hold this passive stretch 
No crazy kicking or squeezing. For 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And let go. Give that leg a break. Shake it out. Oh, it's a bit of a doozy. I know that one's squeezy too. For our last active exercise, we're going to be doing a little bit of strengthening our hip flexors to help get a better stretch out of those hamstrings. So for this next exercise, you're going to want a chair or some kind of bench, something that can lift your hips high off the ground. And I want you to be sitting high, so don't just use a yoga block or two or a pillow. Sit on a couch, but ideally a chair, something a little bit sturdy is going to make this more comfortable. Now that we're no longer lying on the floor, it's going to be even more important that you keep your back flat. It's gonna be tempting to round that back to lean forwards. So I'm gonna be doing a lot of cueing, making sure your low back in particular stays nice and flat. So for this exercise, starting seated on your chair or bench, knees bent, you're gonna extend your right leg forwards. Right leg can be totally straight or you're welcome to keep a little bend in that knee. Keeping your torso lifted and your back flat, you're gonna lift that right leg up, drop it down. This is gonna feel pretty squeezy through your hip flexors, through the quads and that leg. We're going for about 10 leg lifts on this leg. So another seven, six, five. If it's feeling really crampy through that hip, bend your knee a little bit more. That's three, two. After this last one, immediately fold forwards over that right leg. We're gonna hold for about 20 to 30 seconds. Don't worry about what the left leg is doing. We're trying to find that stretch through the hamstrings in the right leg. If you'd like to add a calf stretch, you can really flex that foot reaching your toes towards your face. That is an optional addition. Taking a couple breaths here. Holding for about another 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And you can lean on back, shake out that right leg if you need to. We'll switch legs. So planting your right foot, extending this left leg forwards, keeping your torso lifted back nice and flat, lifting your left leg up for 10, lower it down. Nine, eight, seven, six. Don't worry about how high that foot's going. I just want you to bring it as high as you can. Four, three, two. After the last one, forward fold right away. Don't take a break. The reason I want that forward fold to come fast after all of those squeezes is we're trying to take advantage of something called reciprocal inhibition, which is where our body is smart enough that if we're contracting the muscles on one side of our joint, so our quads and our hip flexors, it has to let our hamstrings relax for our leg to actually move. If our hamstrings are also tight and contracting, our leg's not gonna move anywhere. So after we're contracting these muscles, hamstrings are relaxing a couple times. We're trying to take advantage of that window of time while our hamstrings are relaxed to see if we can lean forwards into a deeper forward fold. Go ahead, come on out. That was a lot of talking. That was surely 20 or 30 seconds worth. Shake it out. If you would like an extra challenge, this is optional. You can try both legs at once. Extending both legs forwards, back stays flat. You may have to lean back a little bit farther for this one. Totally up to you. Trying to lift both for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five. And Nate's doing a really good job keeping that back totally flat. Three, two, last one, forward fold. As soon as those feet get back to that ground, finding your hamstring stretch, making sure your low back is flat, chest is reaching just up ever so slightly. What we wanna avoid is really reaching with those hands in the chest, that makes the back round. So it's nice if you have a mirror you can do this in front of or take a video of yourself on your smartphone. You may be surprised how much you actually reach with your arms instead of tilting your pelvis. So after you've held your forward fold for 20 to 30 seconds, this is our passive stretch. Go ahead, come on out, shake things out. Great. So now that you made it through all through that hip flexor and hamstring strengthening and stretching, let's check in on how that forward fold is looking. So go ahead, take your feet about hip width apart, keeping your back nice and flat. Hands can be on your hips, or maybe they're going to be tracing your thighs, taking just a little bit of a bend in those knees. See how far forwards you can reach now. Maybe feeling a little bit better than the beginning of class, you may be able to reach a little bit farther down those legs. If not, don't panic. Flexibility training is a long-term goal. That's why we're making this as a whole 30-day challenge. So how'd it go? How are those hamstrings feeling? Hopefully you're feeling a little flexy already, but if not, don't sweat it. It can take up to four to six weeks to really see or feel progress when it comes to flexibility training. So keep sticking with it. 
or you may not be able to touch your toes by the end of a month of training. If you practice this two to three times a week, I am hoping that you'll notice that it, you're able to stretch deeper into those hamstrings, reach your hands farther down those legs in our hamstring stretches, as well as the stretches being more comfortable in your body. So if you'd like to do this for the 30 day challenge, all you have to do is repeat this video. So you're doing it two to three times a week, including rest days in between the sessions. The reason I caution against doing the same routine every single day is because this particular video includes a lot of active flexibility exercises. That means we're strengthening the muscles. And when anytime we're doing strengthening, we need time for them to prepare afterwards. So two to three times a week, having a couple days off in between, it's gonna be great. And don't forget to take progress pictures. Selfishly, I'd love if you sent me pictures of your progress. I'm looking to do a short compilation vision video of people who had the before the 30 day challenge and after the 30 day challenge, improvement in your ability to get closer to touching towards your toes. So if you're if you're interested in volunteering, sharing some of your progress pics, you can email me at Danny at DannyLinksFlexibility.com. And finally, if you're someone who likes uh, more of a visual learning style and like all of this in a written format, I do have a PDF copy of all of these exercises available for download on my website. I'll add a link into the description of this video where you can get a copy of the PDF. With that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please post any questions you have about any exercises or feedback on this video format. I'd love to make more videos if this is something y'all are interested in. And I wish you the best of luck in your toe touching endeavors. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.